therapist committed to the service of God and my community. One of my clients was the wife of a U.S. agent who was allegedly molesting his minor daughter. Shortly after this set of circumstances, I was apparently identified as a national security risk and enlisted into a U.S. government research program in which I was subjected to directed energy weapons, which caused me to have a stroke and incapacitated me even until present. In May 2004, I was directed by the United States Veterans Administration to have a colonoscopy during which I was implanted against my will with biochips. They were burned to my colon, injected into the roof of my mouth, and into my ears while I was conscious. I went to an attorney when this happened and was informed that the University of California was involved in this travesty as well. I am apparently their cash cow for research for the Department of Defense Department of Justice, even though this is against all national and international laws. Is this an example of executive orders that are above the law? I have lost everything, my family, my home, my career, my health, my freedom to be private, and etc. I am guilty of no crime other than to be a pastor, which falls into the criteria of charismatic personality and is a reason enough in modern-day home of the free America to be subjected to this under the National Security Act. The agent who was allegedly molesting his child still has full access to harm her with no worry of being stopped, and I have had no contact with my children ever since August 1994 when they gave me the stroke and kept me, kept me tortured since. The VA has stolen $5,300 from me when I fled from California to Puerto Rico, even though I have a fiduciary and my funds are supposed to be in safekeeping. The fiduciary was against my will, by the way, and that's why all of this has happened. Um, they deemed me as incompetent illegally so that they could do this to me. When I attempt to advocate for myself, I am subjected to phone calls and emails being re rerouted. I have been abducted from my house and jailed after being beaten with bats by police at gunpoint for absolutely nothing and charged with terrorist acts and resisting arrest when I tried to breathe as they were holding my head under pillows that were spraying me. I was jailed for five days and was denied all my medications when at the time I was on 35 pills per day. I was never allowed to return to my house and it was a Section 8 rental agreement. My care provider still lives there after stealing my deposits and some of my belongings. I was so incapacitated when this happened, I was barely ambulatory but I was never incompetent, trust me. In fact, I was asleep when they broke my door down and attacked me. I bled eternally, internally for four months and had many witnesses, but I was blocked from making reports to the proper authorities, which is the case every time I am harmed in this manner. I have been taken to a mental ward by police when I called and reported prowlers who were actually using behind-the-wall surveillance equipment to hassle me. My VA doctor refused to contact the facility where I was taken and verify I was on medication. As per his orders for my medical condition and stimulants were one of the medications, which then showed up in my urine sample. During my incarceration, they illegally injected me with a haldol against my will and medical condition as depressants are harmful to me. The facility was a 25-bed facility and the census was 65. There was no place to sit or lay down, and I was not allowed to sit or lay on the floor. I was forced to stay there for 72 hours as my VA doctor refused to intervene on my behalf. My VA compensation was hindered and is to this day, and it is to this day. And when I complained of crimes and corruption to the DOJ and the DOJ ADA, I was implanted, as I reported above. After being implanted, I was immediately subjected to torture, which includes being forced to experience via holographic imaging the voice and voice-to-skull technology, severe headaches, part of the directed energy research, as well as being generally incapacitated, is a daily experience and is increased in intensity, frequency, and duration upon my attempting to advocate for myself and get it stopped. I've reached out for legal, medical, and social services, and my access has been blocked at every turn. I've been defamed on several occasions in order to be denied services, and some of these service providers have verified this for me. The VA gave me a fiduciary against my will and without due process of law, supposedly in order to say I am not capable of giving consent to be used in these ways, even though having a fiduciary does not give any right for such actions. 
In fact, nothing gives anyone, including the U.S. officials, under executive orders to do such things to anyone according to national and international laws regarding torture. Persons involved are Mike Seitler, o Oakland Regional Veterans Administration Inspector General, Neil E. Nielsen, a Veterans Administration field agent, also listed as a Raytheon recruiter of sorts. Ted Gunderson is possibility. I can't say that for sure because what I saw Ted do was through holographic imaging and not person to person. However, I did not know Ted when I saw him do what I saw him do that makes me believe he was part of them um, until after the rally in Washington, D.C. So, uh, let's see, he was a former LA FBI head. He's now, who knows? Dennis Uldrich, he's a VA fiduciary department head. Michael Green, Lisa Green, Mark Morawski, Sally Riggs, Cindy Bastillas, Matthew and Marcus, and I don't know their last names, all operatives supposedly embezzling my funds as they are considered to be helping me as my care providers. And the whole time these people were torturing me. I am guilty of no crimes and I am certainly not a danger to national security. Investigations by the above have proven this and yet they continue to harm me under the guys that I am a danger to national security and therefore subject to being used for this research. Uh, when I went to Puerto Rico, the investigator said, Kevin, I can't help you at this point. He identified everything for me. He was willing to call my family and tell them, yes, he, what he's saying is true, but I can't help you because you're considered to be a national security risk in the United States will not help me, will not allow me to. He also went on to say, Kevin, I have children too. I have a family also, and I don't want to end up in your situation. I have informed every related department of the U.S. government and have had my story proven by the governor's office in Puerto Rico where I fled for my life, requested amnesty from the U.S. government, and had a congressional investigation prove that I am saying what I am saying is true with x-rays and CAT scans. I kept the actual x-rays and, and CAT scans which showed the implants which is consistent with the CAT scan reports but inconsistent with the x-ray reports. That proves the corruption continued even there. After we proved this, I was told they could no longer help me. Since then, Mr. Trigo, liaison to the Veterans Administration for Mr. Fortunio's congressional office, has told investigators I did not follow through. I filed claims regarding the above in Mr. Terrado of the Puerto Rico Veterans Administration on three occasions and have all the copies he lost them every time, and I personally handed them to him. To this day, no claims have been filed, and he still has no explanation with regard to where they are. I turned to the Washington, D.C. office for assistance, and they referred my case to the National BIID office for investigation. I am still subject to torture, and nothing has been done to file my claims. I have turned this into the Department of Justice and got nowhere but implanted illegally. I have made reports to every current U.S. Senator at this time. I have informed the Department of Defense I am aware of their program and want to stop immediately as it has caused and is causing irreparable damage and according to torture laws, that is grounds for immediate action to stop it. I have informed several congresspersons, including Mr. Fortunio of Puerto Rico, who told me I was in the correct hands with Mr. Trigo, who has dug his heels in the ground and says I have not followed through. When I told him they were torturing me daily and he refused to intervene and get my, my three months later medical appointment moved up to address the issue immediately. I can go on forever recounting the many travesties of justice this most corrupt and criminal U.S. government conspiracy has committed against me in these past 12 years in order to allow their agent to continue to molest his children at the expense of me and mine. I am seeking.